Good day and welcome to Banswara Syntex Limited Q2 FY24 earnings conference call. This conference call may contain forward-looking statements about the company which are based on the beliefs, opinions and expectations of the company as on the date of this call. These statements are not the guarantees of future performance and involve risks and uncertainties that are difficult to predict. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen-only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star, then zero on your touchtone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Ravi Toshnewal, Managing Director. Thank you and over to you, sir. Thank you. Uh, good afternoon, everyone, and I welcome you all to our quarter two and half yearly FY24 earnings conference call. Along with me, we have on the call our CFO, MS Kavita Gandhi, and SGA, our investor relations advisors. I hope all of you have been able to go through the investor presentation uploaded on the exchange and our company website. The global economy today is facing multiple headwinds currently. Inflation remains at elevated levels. Geopolitical issues of the Palestine-Israel conflict and the Ukraine war lead to business uncertainties. And while the Indian economy has been resilient to weather such unprecedented challenges and continues to be in a relative speed spot globally, the textile fashion market is experiencing a slowdown. We had seen a boom year with lots of orders in FY23. However, with the start of FY24, some correction has begun. The markets of the USA and UK in particular have seen huge corrections due to inventory buildup that has led to slow lifting of core articles. For us, in Banswara, we saw the business in these two markets in particular fall by more than 50%. Our exposure to these two markets being large, our forecast for growth has not been achieved. It is expected now that this inventory buildup will get used up by the beginning of 2024. Banswara has made, in the meantime, very good efforts to grow market share in other export markets. Japan, Korea, and Australia have seen growth. The markets for uniforms in Eastern Europe have started ordering. We have been able to grow in the domestic market significantly to offset some of the lack of export demand. The export domestic market continues to remain strong. We are confident that with the bounce back in the USA and the UK markets, we will be back with more value-added orders and capacity utilization. The Indian textile industry has witnessed this slowdown on the back of subdued demands in exports that has caused the domestic market as well to have an increased supply and problems in the power in the pricing. So the demand has been muted primarily due to inflation coupled with lower sales at the retailer's end. This is because they had a lot of stock and with lower sales, they were not able to order more. The overall pickup in the industry is expected to happen in quarter four, with the destocking being mostly done in Western countries. This destocking process will kickstart the process of placing new orders, even in the Indian companies. The demand for yarn remained under pressure and this has led to lower spreads across the industry. Now let me talk about our financial performance. Our total income declined by 18.6% to rupees 624.2 crores in the first half year of 24 on a year-to-year -year basis. The EBITDA stood at rupees 60.3 crore during H1 FY24. Profit before depreciation and tax came in at rupees 
45.9 crore. The company recorded a profit after tax of rupees 18.5 crores in the first half year, and exports contributed 40% in the overall revenues. The debt equity ratio for the first half year stood at 0.6. Now, moving to the business segments individually, as you know, we have three business segments. The yarn division, to speak about the first one, witnessed a weak demand and pricing pressure. The yarn sales declined by 13% to rupees 264 crores in the first half year. However, despite these challenges, we did increase the quantity of the sales by 6%, which shows that we can be flexible on our capacity. The capacity utilization in the yarn division stood at a low of 83% for the first half year, and we are currently exploring opportunities in terms of new product developments and new markets to be able to penetrate both in South India and Europe with core spun and knit based yarns and more value added yarns. The fabric vertical witnessed a below par performance as revenues dipped by 21% to 209 crores in the first half of the fiscal year as compared to the same period last year. The capacity utilization in the fabric vertical stood at 69% for the first half year. We have seen, however, that the demand in our worsted products actually improved and the value-added worsted fabrics had a demand which was increased over last year. And that is why we plan to invest 50 crores in our worsted spinning, which will improve our value-added product mix. The demand in the Far East remained average. The U.S. and the U.K. markets, as I said before, had a very poor sales, and we expect to see the improved demand happen in the next half of the year, as retailers are expected to continue to destock their inventories. Talking about our garment business, here we had the biggest dip in our sales, with the garment sales declining by 24% to 139 crores, the sales were impacted particularly for our suits and blazers. However, the domestic market has been good for the trouser category. In fact, we have seen a situation of being oversold on our trouser lines. The company has established a state-of-the-art product development center in Daman, which will drive the business growth from existing and potential customers. And we are using Daman as a showcase for both the fabric and the garment business. Going forward, we envisage quarter three and quarter four to be better than H1, but not significantly. The second half of the fiscal year may gain momentum across the board. However, inflationary pressures persist and can continue to hamper growth to a certain extent. The export regions will certainly pick up as destocking will take place and new order books will be available from the retailer's ends. We will focus on new product development improving our capacity utilization, which will enable us to get some operating leverage. Our endeavor will be to take advantage of our lead times that have improved and flexibility with larger capacities to attract customers from the segments of markets in uniform and worsted fabric, which are still witnessing growth. We will continue to strive towards a 10% cash profit and a net profit close to the range of 5%. With this, I would like to open the floor for questions. Thank you. Thank you, sir. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and 1 on the touchstone phone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. I request to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles.
The first question is from the line of Mr. Manan Poladia from MKP Securities Private Limited. Please go ahead, sir. Hello. Hi, sir. Am I audible? Yes, yes. Go ahead, Malan. Yes, sir. Firstly, congratulations on posting a good set of numbers. Uh, sir, my first question is on the pant project side. Uh, so, I've seen the website and it says somewhere that there are a unit of Banswara Syntax. What I wanted to understand was, are they a, a wholly owned subsidiary of Banswara Syntax? No, not at all. And I don't think they have mentioned that that may have been much earlier in their publicity that they grew out of Banswara Syntax or they are a, uh, they are a customer of ours. However, they have nothing to do with us. So, uh, the ownership is also not related party? No. All right. And uh, would you be able to tell us how much percentage of their business, uh, of our business it would be, or is that not a very large number? It is not a very large number. All right, sir. I understand. So uh, I think that uh, solves my uh, question on that. Uh, the other question, sir, what I really want to understand is, so you have three businesses with respect to yarn, fabric, and garment. What yes. I'm trying to understand is, uh, is this where you want to grow the garment business and the yarn and the fabric is essentially backward uh, integration? Or it, what is your focus strategically for the, say, next three to five fiscals? Right. So for the next uh, plan of our growth, it is all about trying to increase the brand business. And we have been working on that both in the fabric as a brand as well as garment as a brand. And we have launched already, as far as uh, you might be aware, uh, a, a direct-to-consumer brand called One Mile, which is Banswara-owned completely. And we have supported brands of all types in India. So, like for a fabric brand, we have been supporting HFW and Huddersfield Fine Worsteds, which do the brand of Roger, Roger Lavial. And we support many brands in product. So... It is our endeavor to keep growing the brand business, and we will talk about this more in the next quarters, because our uh, capex towards the brand business is now allocated at about five to six crores for the next year. Correct. Also, sir, my last question is: We've done an acquisition recently, correct? Uh, we have not yet announced that. We are working on that final uh, brand acquisition from Italy, but yes, we will exactly. announce that in the next quarter. So, uh, what is the rationale behind that acquisition and what size are we looking to acquire? If uh, you could good, give some we color on that. Talk about that because we haven't yet fully completed all the compliance for it. So, we will yes. announce it at that time. All right, I understand, sir. All right, thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Ms. Aditi Savant from ADM Advisors. Please go ahead, ma'am. Yeah, hi. Thank you so much for the opportunity. Uh, my first question is on the yarn segment. That, you know, currently we are hearing that the threads are going down. As, you know, the realization hasn't picked up yet. So how is the situation on ground and uh, what do you expect it, uh, do you expect it to improve uh, in the coming future? Yeah, thank you, Aditi. Uh, see, the yarn business is challenging at the moment, and we have never had a capacity utilization which has dropped to 83% in yarn. We have actually deliberately shut down some capacities in the yarn and are surprised by the fact that even after doing that, you know, we have not had that big a loss, and we are still making money in the yarn business. The point is only about demand, and demand will come back in a fashion which is reverse of the way it rose. If you look at uh, the previous financial year, yarn began to do very, very well. Then the fabric business was doing well. Then the garment business began to do well. And now we are seeing a reversal of this in which the garment business got impacted with the highest amount of capacity utilization loss, then the fabric business, and then the yarn business. So as soon as garments pick up an actual offtake of the consumers happen, the yarn business will rise. It cannot happen before there is real demand. And we are seeing that this real demand, because of a very good year, an pent-up demand that led to a spent-up and over-optimistic buying on behalf of most buyers, we have experienced a reversal. 
this will change and this was expected to change already begun to happen in the fabric business which we expect to see in quarter 4 but in the garment business we think the revival will happen from quarter 1 of the next financial year okay got it sir and thanks for the detailed explanation uh, my second question is on the working capital side uh, that uh, what are the, i mean what is the uh, number of days uh, in terms of total networking capital and uh, how much uh, how many days of in inventory do we usually carry i'll let um, kavita answer so, this Aditi, if i can answer on that uh, right now we are on an inventory level we are at 115 days inventory and data are uh, around 55 days so working capital as a cycle is kept under control and as the demand supply mismatch goes away, this will get improved. Okay, and how many, how many days of inventory uh, do we usually carry? Generally, we carry sub-100. So uh, around uh, uh, 95 to 100 days is an ideal inventory we would like to keep. But we are a little higher right now because of this situation. Okay, okay, understood, man. Thank you so much and uh, all the best for the upcoming future. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Before we take the next question, we would like to remind the participants that you may press star and one to ask a question. The next question is from the line of Mr. Ravi Shah from Opel Securities Investment. Please go ahead, sir. Yeah, hi. Uh, am I audible? Yes. yes. Go ahead. Yeah. So, I just wanted to ask a little bit about the worsted spinning that you had mentioned in the presentation. So, just wanted to know if you talk a little bit about that. Sure. Um, so, you know, this is one of the green shoots we are seeing that in this whole process of what we talk about a replacement happening in India for a China plus one, we can clearly see that this is actually playing out in the woolen blended worsted fabrics. The capacities in China were destroyed during the pandemic, did not recover, and the world is coming towards us in India for worsted fabrics. And we are seeing that we are able to meet a demand both for uniform fabrics in the worsted segment as well as for over-the-counter fabrics from India in a way that is significantly increased our need for worsted yarns. So this is, uh, this is somewhere where we are investing about 50 crore rupees to be able to make more value-added fabrics and to be able to service this demand. So, as you see, this, this whole uh, uh, portion of what we talk about as a market going down is not uniform. There are sectors of the market which are actually doing quite well. And we are refocusing our energies on more value-added replacements of what are coming from China into India, as well as this woolen blended fabrics where there is a short supply due to a lot of capacity going away. Uh, understood, sir. So basically, this my second question is somewhat linked to the first you mentioned about China plus one. So that strategy is clearly, is it playing out for Indian companies? And if it is playing out, then what, what kind of market share would we be looking at, like, gaining? Yeah, so unfortunately, you know, the China plus one is playing out, but the overall demand going down has led to not having yet experienced the benefits of it fully. So you can see that although the buyers in the US and UK and Europe have a strategy which is very clear to move away from China, and the Chinese factories at this point are suffering more than us, but that is no consolation to the fact that overall demand is so poor that even we have not been able to utilize the benefit of that. So this is some situation which is abnormal after a market uh, in which we are currently down, um, there is always a boom and we are expecting that to happen from quarter four and also in quarter one we will see that most of the inventory levels having gone away from our more developed markets, there will be back a uh, ordering cycle. Uh, understood, sir. That helps. Thank you for thank you for such a detailed answer. And all the best. Thank you. Thank you.
The next question is from the line of Mr. Nirbhay Mahavar from N Square Capital Advisors Private Limited. Please go ahead, sir. Yeah, good afternoon, sir. Uh, sir, I was looking at numbers of some of the uh, cotton uh, textile companies, and uh, they have shown uh, significant uh, improvement. So, is the cycle for cotton versus man-made is different, particularly for the home textile companies? Well, I don't know too much about home textiles, but I know that Arvind has shown pretty bad results, and many of the cotton mills have shown worse than synthetics. So, the demand is actually pretty subdued. Denim has done very badly. So, you know, this demand being subdued in the textile world is because it is a discretionary expense. And in this discretionary expense, when many other inflation items and high ticket expenses have happened, uh, especially on travel, on food, on many other uh, things that people have to do in communication and um, you know, their uh, data bills, etc. Then the final consumption left for fabric and for garments remains low. And this is something we experienced many times in our history of uh, the last 50 years we have seen. Uh, this will be followed again by a boom. Okay. So, sir, this uh, cyclical compression and demand, is it impacting our CAPEX plans or are we going ahead with our longer-term growth capex? Yeah, that's a great question. So we had planned and communicated a capex of around 120 crores, and out of which we have uh, spent uh, so far in the first half year 52 crores, and our plan now is to spend another 55 in this balance of the year. So we will have spent about 107 crores instead of 120, and we are taking it a little slow, but we are not going back because our belief is that all of these investments will be important and we have to be prepared for the market. Most of our customers are now experiencing lower lead time from us. We have increased our presence of touching base with the customers. Our executives have traveled both to the U.S., U.K., European markets and base, had meetings with customers extensively and sampled products with them extensively. And as soon as demand is back in those markets and they are ready to order again, we will see that we must be prepared. And therefore, we are not going back in any way. Our investment plans remain as they are. So, uh, in next, we will have the capacity to do a 3,000 crore kind of revenue if demand comes. Yeah, so we, with the present investment, after this 107 crores is done, another 55 in the six months, our capacity exists to be able to do 2,000 crores easily. And after that, if we have to make further investments to get to 3,000 crores. Sure. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Ms. Pooja Shah from Bright Security Services. Please go ahead, ma'am. Uh, yeah. Hello, sir. Am I audible? Yes. Go ahead, Pooja. Yeah. Uh, so I wanted to ask, uh, so what is the geographic revenue distribution for the company? And uh, secondly, what, what are the sales percentage from exports? Thank you. I'll answer the second one, and for the first one, Kavita will answer it. So, as far as the total revenue is concerned from exports, we are now at a ratio of 60-40. 60% is domestic and 40% is export. We used to be at, traditionally at 50-50. Uh, this year, the situation is more on the domestic market, and we expect that we would like to come back to 50-50, and when the mature markets of the West are back, it will happen. But I'll let okay. uh, Kavita answer the question of your first part. So on a retail wise, on a geographical one, if you look at from the US, UK, Europe, Turkey, these are the like a major uh, areas where we do our exports. 
that business is uh, in the range of around 30% right now from the total export. So that is where the uh, gap is coming. I mean, there are uh, various other geographies we can catch up offline and we can share with you for the more details. Oh, okay, got it. Noted. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Mr. Akshay Kotari, an individual investor. Please go ahead. Yeah, thanks for the opportunity. Uh, so could you just uh, tell us uh, what is the capital employed in each of the divisions and uh, return ratios? Uh, sure. Um, so in the yarn division, in this first half year, we have deployed another 28 crore rupees. And um, a balance of about uh, 43 crores is to be deployed. deployed. Um, this includes our worsted spinning, which we talked about. Um, this will be in the um, next half of the year. And for the fabric vertical, we have deployed uh, CapEx. You are talking about the total CapEx deployed or just what we have deployed in this year? Uh, no, I'm just uh, total, cap or total capital employed. Uh. Okay, total capital. So uh, we generally look at as a uh, integrated company, and that's the reason we don't uh, really look into the segmental on the uh, capital employed and all that. But uh, if you want to understand on a more or less like 157 crore uh, cap uh, working capital get deployed in Yarn, uh, in case of a fabric around 220 and in case of a garment if you want to get into understanding it's uh, around 130. Okay so which is the most uh, in terms of return ratios which is the most uh, return accretive segment for us? So it changes from time to time. Um, generally we have seen that uh, when of the market is bad because of us being vertical, we are at least insulated on the downside, which you all can see in our results compared to many others, that our results will still be better. Uh, this insulation is because we have a cushioning in our garment and fabric business when yarn is doing badly. At this moment, we can see that the garment business is actually getting a better return than the fabric business which is getting a better return than the yarn. But this will change when the market becomes buoyant again. And then in the upside, we are ready to get the benefits when the upside happens, as we did in the year uh, 23, FY23. But in this, um, uh, in this last year, it has been more challenging. Um, we have insulated ourselves on the downside, and we are ready for the upside in terms of capex. Okay. Uh, so, secondly, what sort of uh, innovation are we doing with the products? Because I have been hearing that uh, India, as it stands today, has a lot of room to do innovation in textiles, but uh, uh, especially in man-made fibers. Correct. So, yeah. So, I mean, we are at the top of the ladder on t in terms of the recall that customers and most brands have um, as a supplier. Um, and all of the top brands in the world do come to us to uh, look at us as a sourcing destination because we have stretch fabrics and a complete uh, dominance uh, in a way uh, in, in our buy stretch clothing uh, that we do for comfort. And that is the direction in which the market is going. We have added knits, and that capacity has been uh, in synthetics quite appreciated. The, uh, uh, the innovations continue in terms of what we can do in finishing, where we have a state-of-the-art European facility in terms of giving products which are much more, uh, let's say, technologically as well as aesthetically closer to the product that Europe makes as compared to what China makes. This has been a continuous thrust with us, right from the time we had a French uh, joint venture and then we had a Portuguese connection and we continue to employ a lot of Italian expats who work with us in our factory to get continuous innovation. 
this is not stopped and in fact we have chosen to produce better quality goods and keep capacities idle rather than at this point just fill up the capacities to try and get to the lowest bottom line you know of the products and fill up capacities this does not uh, this is a strategy which is deliberately chosen and we know that it will result in better innovation as well as in getting customers who matter and want good product to come to us understood so are we planning to go on the technical textiles front as well so in the technical textiles we've only done automotive textiles in which we made a joint venture with uh, uh, with a us based company and tesca uh, we have a 40% uh, uh, joint venture in this automotive and that part is doing well okay so the turnover of about 80 to 100 crores annually there and uh, they have also expanded into chennai with another division there okay but that doesn't come in our top line it would directly come in our bottom line right correct yes. correct so take uh, automotive is just uh, one of the part of this big uh, opportunity uh, i am i guess uh, there are things called fire retardant fabric as well which is gaining traction we are doing that already in terms of technical fabrics for uniforms we have a significant um, sector for uniform fabrics in which we have seen even the polish police and the european uh, uh, market eastern european market in the czech market have taken products from us with fr with various uh, other protective layers of clothing including kevlar so we have a business which we do in that which is to the extent of 30 to 40 crores Uh, yeah i think that's it from my side thanks and all the best and wish you happy diwali happy diwali to you too thank you thank you the next question is from the line of mr manan poladia from mkp securities private limited please go ahead sir uh hello hi sir am i audible yes manan go ahead yes. thank you for giving me the opportunity again for see uh so secondly what i want to understand is you told me about your strategy for the next two months so now uh, if i were to uh, take a more near term view what i want to understand was you said that when the industry does come back you are saying that currently since fabrics and garments is doing badly you think they will do better first and then yarn will recover is that uh, correct what i'm understanding yes that's correct the recovery in garment we expect to first happen and fabric will recover after that and then the uh, recovery will also of course come into the yarn business this is the natural cycle of the reverse so, correct and so uh, what do you think would be the time frame for the garment and fabric recovery to come in and then the yarn recovery to come in in terms of quarters 1 2 3 quarters yeah so we are seeing that the the significant recovery in garments should begin to happen um in in the uh, in the uh, first quarter of the next financial year correct correct so right now we're not seeing any traction for the next uh, two quarters because we are already halfway through q3 clearly i mean we are not expecting the next two quarters to be very significantly different um, correct and therefore this is the next financial year that will be substantially different but we still expect to be doing as good as we did a uh, year before for sure and maybe better now this depends on what happens in the market in the last quarter in the last quarter we can experience um some demand happening for the fabric because uh, the stocks might get lifted completely the stocks that we have this if this gets lifted then we will experience uh, because if we are expecting quarter 1 to be good in the fa- in the garment part they must lift the stocks that is there and that will help right. us in the uh, in the fourth quarter correct and you are not seeing any uh, working capital being such uh, any further or uh, worsening in terms of net working capital base not significantly at all in fact we are quite comfortable there and this is something which gives us some strength and makes us feel that we are in a position where the downside is quite insulated i mean we can't really expect to be in a worse position than we are today 
this is really a uh, situation which I is understand, yeah and we are doing fairly well in it you know it's, it's just a question of waiting for the demand to come back correct and so uh, just another question i'm asking just like that uh, in in uh, in your opinion what as a company as bansara what do you target in terms of a company wide roe and roce what, do you have internal targets for that so we're saying that we are targeting a 10% cash profit and roughly about uh, so in terms of roce um, one second i'll just let kavita answer that for you yeah, sure sure firstly in terms of roc uh, we are looking at uh, uh, somewhere in the range of around 10 to 15% uh, in this situation let's see how the numbers flow down on that correct right i understand them thank you thank you participants who wish to ask questions may press star and one on their touch tone phone The next question is from the line of Mr. Aditya Sen from Robo Capital. Please go ahead. Hi, thank you for the opportunity. So, to the previous participant, you answered that uh, we are doing some 107 crore capex this year. So, I wanted to understand uh, from which quarter should we expect the revenue to kick in from this capex? Which quarter of next year? Quarter one of next year. The quarter one itself. Okay, so that's aligned with the growth of the recovery in the garment and fabric segment. Absolutely. Yeah. And for next year, uh, definitely we are not going to achieve our previous target of around 1600 crores. So should we expect around roughly roughly 10-15 percent growth for next year, top line growth? No, I think you know the next year we should be better than what we are talking about for uh, uh, our our best year ever. Which was at 1500 crore. So we expect to cross that in the next year. Okay, Easily. so yeah, that's optimistic as of now. Yeah, I mean, so this is a little early to say that, but next, the uh, in the next quarter we'll be able to be more clear about what is happening. Um, we do see that there is uh, the potential in capex and there is a potential in the markets. So we have gone ahead with. Uh, exploring the markets feeding the markets and waiting right 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 okay then that was my question thank you okay. thank you before we take the next question we would like to remind the participants that you may press star and one to ask a question the next question is from the line of mr yug mehta from ap capital please go ahead sir Yeah, thank you for the opportunity. Can you elaborate more on one mile and how much it will contribute to our overall revenues? Uh so one mile is uh, fairly recent. Um so I mean at this moment uh, it's uh, it, it's uh, been um, launched and we we think the revenues will probably not be more than uh, for the moment uh, 50 lakhs or so. but we'll see all of those will happen in the next year okay okay and uh, my next question is how much uh, does the domestic and global demand for fabrics and garments look like and is domestic demand expected to pick up faster than export demand for our products so domestic brand is uh, domestic market for us is something which we have found to be surprisingly more resilient and it is growing well for us we will continue to maintain that and we expect export demand as well to come back so this will be the double benefit we get once the demand in export comes back we will not lose the gain and foothold we have created in domestic and continue to grow in the domestic while getting whatever benefits we get from the demand coming back in exports so this is how we can hit our 7 800 crore target in the fabric business and maybe around 4 500 in the garment business which we have capacities for the yarn business always remains in terms of the turnover more stable the pricing depends on the overall demand supply situation okay okay uh, my last question would be as per the news around us uh, if the proposed fta between india uk is signed then how much will it benefit our company 
it will give a good fillip. Uh, the UK used to be the, one of the largest export markets for us before, and uh, already uh, the engagement has started back again with most of our customers like Marks and Spencer and Nex. And we expect that uh, this should help us uh, to improve our exports by maybe 10-15% if it does happen. Okay, okay. Uh, thank you. Uh, that's all from my side. Hey. Thank Thanks, you. Joe. Participants who wish to ask questions may press star and one on their touchtone phone. We will wait for a moment for the question queue to assemble. As there are no further questions, I would now like to hand the conference over to Mr. Ravi Toshnewal for closing comments. Thank you, everyone. Um, it has been a challenging year, and we do think that uh, we will get out of this within the next uh, six months and then look forward to share much better news with you all. For the moment, I would like to wish everyone a happy Diwali and a new year. And thank you for the interest in our company, and thank you for being present in the investor call. Bye. Thank Happy you Dibble. so much, sir. On behalf of Panswara Syntex Limited, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us, and you may now disconnect your lines.